Welcome to Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98, coming to you from Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich. I'm Rob Oberg and with me is Paul Casos. We're here for round two of the Castrol New Year Drag Racing Series. And Paul, I understand a very big entry list. A big entry list here today, Rob. In fact, it's a Castrol Series and one day event record for Willowbank Raceway with over 230 drivers and riders contesting the 10 categories racing here today. And the feature brackets particularly strong. Particularly strong. It, the rounds of the Australian Top Fuel and Top Alcohol Championship, and also in Wreckers Hotline Top Comp Eliminator, over 20 contestants have entered. So we've got one great day of racing here today. Well, as usual, Tanya Campbell's prowling the pits. She's going to keep us up to date with all the news down there. But Tanya, I understand there's a surprise absence in Top Fuel. That's right, Rob. Australia's Queen of Speed, Rochelle Splatt, announced last week that she's expecting her first child and won't be returning to racing this season. However, the Autobahn top fuel field is looking extremely strong. It's headed up by defending champion American Glenn Micris and Conical Winter Nationals winner Graham Cowan. Robin Kirby will be debuting new sponsorship here at Willow Bank and add to that fellow Victorian Darren DeFilippo, Sydney's Terry Sainty and our own local hope in Roy Smith and we're in for a fast, fabulous night of fuel action. What about BOC Gas's top alcohol, Tanya? How's that shaping up? Well, Rob, all those guys are out to catch Gary Phillips. He's won this event more times than the rest put together. He's leading again now, but he won't be getting it easy tonight. It's one of those events where when you look across the field, any one of these eight cars is in with a good chance and more than capable of winning. Mark Brew and the BOC Gases car has replaced their crowd-pleasing small block Chev for a larger, more conventional engine. I'll tell you more about that a little later, but keep an eye on him, he could be the dark horse here. Thanks Tanya. Well it looks like we're in for a typically great Castrol New Year Series round. So settle back, strap yourself in and enjoy Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98. Another big crowd in here at Willowbank Raceway for round two of the Castrol New Year Series we start off with Autobahn, Top Fuel Eliminator, Round 1, Graham Cowan to take on this man, Robin Kirby. Yes, Robin Kirby uh, out of Victoria driving the Pennzoil Dragster. The first time, Rob, that uh, we've seen the Top Fuel cars at Willowbank Raceway since the very successful Winter Nationals of last year. Certainly uh, the big crowd are enjoying the, seeing the fuel cars back again. Now, Robin Kirby, he uh, caused a bit of an upset this afternoon, qualified in the number two position. Graham Cowan had some problems, he's way back in number five, he's leading the Australian Championship but I'll tell you what, he can't take any risks here Paul. No, he's got a hard race uh, first time round here, so waiting for the lights to go and away they go, a good start there from Graham Cowan out of Sydney, the foot's into the top field and through he goes for the win. Cowan was off it very early, still ran 5-1-0 uh, seconds, have a look at this on the replay, the car gets pretty loose at half track. Kirby's got some problems, Cowan shuts it off, Kirby keeps charging, there wasn't that much in it. Yeah, nothing much at all, and uh, coming up now, Terry Sadie, and uh, this is the All-Australian top field drag, and pretty appropriate being Australia Day long weekend. And the Sadie will be up against Darren DeFilippo, another one of the Victorians in the True Flow exhaust uh, fueler. Uh, the first time we've seen this particular car here at Willowbank Raceway, the uh, DeFilippo family uh, imported the car uh, about mid last year and they've got some big hopes for this one Darren DeFilippo there in the car the big supercharger that forces all that air in Terry Sainty, he's never an easy beat no, never uh, very hard, don't uh, underestimate the guy but uh, so just waiting now the uh, DeFilippo car of course a second generation racer is Darren DeFilippo and away he goes this time he's out of the front can he hold it all the way, yes through for the win Runs at 5.52 at 3.23 kilometres an hour. Next up, it's Glenn Micros, the American, driving for Santo Rapposada in the Santos Cranes car. He'll come up against Roy Smith, the local hope, the Brisbane-based Smith and Atherwood team. Top fuel eliminator, there's new cars. Ray Ward, crew chief for Glenn Micros. You've got the new car, new combination. How do you think you're going to go? Uh, well, we've stepped the power up a little bit for this run. It went a, a 502 last pass, I think, which we were pretty happy with. But it, it, one, it lost one of the cylinders at 1,200 feet. So if it runs on eight cylinders, hopefully it'll run a high four at 290. We'll try on anyhow, so. Yeah, really uh, wishful thinking there. And uh, we'll wait and see how they go this time round. But... Uh, this car, of course, the latest technology out of the United States and uh, really performs uh, a little differently on the track. We saw that in qualifying earlier on today, but uh, really looking forward to this run up against the locals, Roy Smith and Mick Athelwood. 
the conditions here, it's very hot. About 37 degrees, track temperature 50 odd degrees. Smith's got a problem. Micros drives it through. 504, 445 kilometres an hour. He wasn't too far off those high four-second times that Ray Ward was talking about. No, so hopefully later tonight with a cooler air, we'll see some of those times. and the VOC Gases car have made a name for themselves as underdogs, running their small block Chevy engine against the big Chrysler engines that normally dominate and top alcohol. Now despite this unconventional approach, Mark has run his car well into the 5.8 second zone and has run it up at the Australian Nationals last year and came third in the overall series. At this event, however, the small block is gone and in its place are 457 cubic inches or 7.5 litres of big block. Mark, what's the story? Well, Tanya, we'd rather run the small block any day for the fans, but uh, the way the weight brakes and that are at the moment, it just means we have to push it way too hard. And uh, we paid the price for that last meeting and uh, hurt the block. So, you know, Bob Bracken offered us, you know, his big block, and we thought we'd give it a go. And, you know, if it works out all right after this meeting, you never know, you might see the end of the small block. Well, it looks like this may very well be a case of if you can't beat them, join them. Sun's starting to uh, dip and the air hopefully will cool down a little bit here at Willowbank Raceway as we move into BOC Gas's Top Alcohol. We're at round two of the Castrol New Year Series. And Paul, Top Alcohol, a great home for the funny cars up against the dragsters. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, out of uh, Queensland there, we've got uh, Steve Parker in the funny car. And this is a new car of uh, for Stan Tindall here at Willowbank Raceway. There's Stan, an ex-world drag boat champion, now running a new Bob Meyer built dragster. Steve Harker, of course, in the Harker Transport uh, Spectra Thermo King funny car. These cars run almost identical engines to the top fuel cars. The difference is they run on methyl alcohol fuel. What difference does the fuel make? About 3,000 horsepower less. These cars producing two to two and a half thousand horsepower, but the racing is still very, very tight. Yeah, very tight indeed. BOC Gas is bringing us top alcohol here at the second round of the Castrol series. Waiting now on the funny car. The uh, rail moving in. Steve Harker takes a little bit of time to stage sometimes, but he's got the jump on Tyndall. Tyndall's come back at him, but boy, he's got loose there off the end of the concrete start launch pad. And it's Harker, 598, 385 kilometres an hour. That's a good performance in the heat. Yeah, good performance well and truly. There is uh, coming up now Scott Ferguson out of uh, South Australia. Have a look at this for a burnout. Ferguson, he's still in it down at what, half three-quarter track. Actually, I think he's gone the full quarter mile there and up against Wayne Newby. He's over the finish line is Ferguson. I've never seen a burnout from an alcohol dragster like that one. That is in the braking area. That's how far he's gone down. Have a look at this on the Wreckers Hotline replay. The fans going wild out here at uh, Willowbank as uh, Ferguson really lighting up the tyres of his top alcohol dragster. Well, it might impress the fans, but I'm not sure how much good it'll do the uh, the valve springs, etc. in that, uh, that engine. Wayne Newby was a little bit more circumspect, so to speak. He's racing out of Sydney and New South Wales, and Scotty Ferguson, his first visit to uh, Willowbank Raceway, and it's a long drive from Adelaide in South Australia. Yeah, long drive. He's doing well uh, in the Australian Championship, wants to try to maintain that, but uh, some great competition here tonight at uh, Willowbank Raceway. Yeah, Ferguson won the last round of the series down in Adelaide, and he's got a big hole shot here. He's got a car length, car length and a half lead on Newby. Newby's coming back at him. 615, 363 kilometres an hour. Newby's just caught him in the lights, I'd say. We'll have a look at that on a uh, Wreckers Hotline replay. Have a look at this for a close finish. Yeah, from where you sit, you couldn't pick it at all, but uh, the uh, electronics tell the story, and uh, through he goes for the win. Uh, out of Queensland now, this is Stephen Reed, the Reed Transport Oldsmobile Funny Car. He also enjoys his burnout. He is up against Pommy Steve Reed in the Premier One Products Dragster from Sydney. And, of course, uh, Pommy Reed, former Australian top alcohol champion, uh, drove for Santo Rapposato in the top fuel ca car for uh, quite some time. 
Now he's back in the dragster, and we've got this that we used to have years ago. Steve Reed racing Steve Reed. Yeah, in fact, you know, probably Steve Reed is quite uh, quite a, an accomplished racer, not only in Australia, but the United States as well as uh, all over Europe, and uh, quite an experienced person, as you said, Rob. So uh, what a great race coming up here. Aussie Steve Reed in the funny car, the uh, far side of the racetrack. He's taking some time to stage. The revs were right up on the Poms car for quite some time. And I don't think it liked it too much. The funny car will get this one, 601, 375 kilometres an hour. So the winner certainly is Reed, and uh, we'll see them back in the next round. The Romac girls, uh, and of course I'll be uh, providing guide back assistance to Mark Rue. He comes up against Gary Phillips. We must make mention of the Romac car. It actually top qualified here this afternoon, but uh, damage to supercharger and had to be withdrawn. So uh, Mark Brew has made it into the field, but his car's still at the back of the fire-up area. No uh, sign of him coming forward yet. Gary Phillips inherited the number one qualifying spot in the Lucas Oils car. And uh, there's a fair bit of activity in the background, I can see, Paul, but at this stage, there's no movement from the BAC Gases Dragster. No, it looks as though Gary Phillips will run through on his own, so a uh, disappointment there, but... Uh for Gary Phillips, he's the reigning national champion. He's the person who everyone knows they've got to beat. Well, he's got this one in the bag. 596, 373. For a sport that's supposed to be so simple as running a straight line race over a quarter mile piece of tarmac, drag racing can get fairly complicated sometimes. This is essentially because at Andrew Championship Drag Racing, we run basically three different systems of handicapping. It starts with the Group 3 Sportsman races. We use this from brackets from Lanaddy Junior Dragster right through to Kenlow Racecars Modified. Basically the drivers get to go out in the afternoon qualifying sessions, run their cars and bikes and find out just how fast they think they'll run at night. What happens from there is they nominate their own handicap time. We call this a dial-in. It might be 10.5 seconds or whatever. What happens then is they go to the line against another competitor. If he's dialed in at say 10.2 seconds, he gets three tenths of a second delay programmed into the Christmas tree. It's then a race to the other end. The one complication though, is if you run quicker than your nominated handicap time, we call it a breakout. You run too quick, you run quicker than your handicap, and you lose. That's how Group 3 works. It levels up the competition. It puts a lot more emphasis back on the driver himself. But in Group 2, things get a little bit more complicated still, as Tanya Campbell will tell us. Championship Drag Racing's Group 2 handicap system is designed to cater for the upper level of sportsman racers who thrive on the challenge of making their car or motorcycle go faster than any other vehicle in its class. It applies in Performance Wholesale Super Comp and Morgan Wacker Competition Bike. Handicaps are still used to even up competition between vehicles of different classes. However, there are no dial-ins and there are no breakouts. Vehicles are divided into classes based on specific types of modifications permitted, engine size and vehicle weight. The driver is then handicapped based on the National Performance Index for his class of vehicle. Now this index is gained by calculating an average from representative times from across the country within that class each quarter. Now it may sound like a case of mathematics gone mad, but the end result is a system that produces great on-the-track racing and a logical pathway to the professional categories. The Group 1 system of competition for the professional categories is by far the simplest. It's really the same system that's been around since 1954 when drag racing first started. It's a straight out drag race over a standing quarter mile. No breakouts, no handicap racing. The first person to the bottom end is the winner as long as they don't cross the centre line or the sideline. It's amazing how easy drag racing really is. There was a lot of discussion at the end of last year as to whether the Raposada racing team would return to contest the new season. Santa Raposada team owner had achieved both of his goals, firstly winning the championship as a driver and then of course last year winning as a team owner. 
and a crash late last year saw them using the backup car for the end part of the series. Certainly not the car you want to be contesting a brand new series in. Well, they are back, bigger and better, with this state-of-the-art dragster from Connie Coletta in the USA. It's run 468 at 315 miles an hour. Can they do it here? We'll see. We're about to find out as we go into the semi-finals of Autobahn Top Fuel. Here we are at round two of the Castrol New Year Series. The stands have really started to fill up, Paul. Yes, yeah, certainly have, and uh, nothing uh, better than the top fuel cars, of course, to big out the fans here at Willowbank Raceway. The, uh, the temperature outside is still pretty warm, Rob. Yes, it is. The conditions are far from ideal for a top fuel dragster. Now, Glenn Micris was the number one qualifier. We had a six-car field. That means there's three left in the semi-finals. He gets the buy run, but I'm uh, sure he is going to run this car as hard as he can. This car, they haven't had it for too long. We've just heard Tanya say this thing went uh, 4.6 seconds, 315 miles an hour in the uh, in the US. That's that's what almost 500 kilometres an hour. They will be having a crack at that first 300 mile an hour pass in Australia, I'd say. Flames look good. It's on a pretty clean run, you'd think. Shuts it a little early. 504, 441. That's really fantastic performances and uh, says a lot about uh, Glenn Micris' driving ability when you think this is his first time in this race car. Glenn, a buy into the finals, but you look like you've done some damage there. There'll be some serious thrashing back in the pits, no doubt. Ah, uh, yeah, but there's nothing that we can't handle. All the guys are real good at their job. They know their job and they'll take it apart and get it back together again. We'll be here for the final. Micris with obviously a lot of confidence in his, in his Australian crew. Now we've got Graham Cowan in the Shell Rocket Industries Dragster. He's got to fight his way to the final. He is up against uh, Darren DeFilippo in the True Flow Exhaust car. This is going to be a hard fought thing. Graham Cowan knows he's up against a runner. Well, plan is to, uh, to try and master the track and get down there as quickly as possible. Uh, the thing ran to half track really good. Uh, turned the tyres and uh, dropped some cylinders. That's what happened last time. But we can get in the last half of the track real good, it'll run pretty good. Yeah, quite an experienced racer, of course, uh, is Graham Cowan, and uh, taking on the Victorian here in uh, Darren DeFilippo. Graham Cowan, uh, despite all of his experience, got quite a youthful crew on board, and uh, I know uh, quite a family affair. He's got his uh, two sons working on the crew, and it is very, very much the youngest crew in Top Fuel, but they are doing a brilliant job with this car. The Filippo is a family operation. Darren was a day and a half late. Cowan got this one. Shuts it early again, but still 498, 395 kilometres an hour. And boy, oh boy, that thing, when it runs a full quarter mile, it is going to be a fast race car. That pass was, in fact, the first four-second pass we've had this weekend. And the replay here will show Graham Cowan getting the power to the track uh, pretty well that time. Have a look at the crew, they're confident. This is in replay, they love it. I'm sure Graham Cowan does too. Graham, a 498, you did shut it off early there. Can we expect bigger things in the final against Glenn? Yeah, this thing's capable of running at 470s, but just, if we can get it to run down the last half, I think it'll run uh, pretty good at half track, didn't it? Uh, uh, 149, I believe. Uh, 240. 249, sorry. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's on track to run 300, but uh, just we can't seem to get it past uh, 1,000 foot, but we'll work on it. Uh, Packed corporate boxes here at Willowbank Raceway for round two of the Castrol New Year series. We're about to move into round two of Wreckers Hotline Top Comp Eliminator. And uh, Paul, you mentioned at the head of the show over 20 entries. We ended up with a 16 car field that's now down to eight. Yeah, and uh, Ken Mumford there and uh, taking on out of Toowoomba the ragged edge car of Graham Porter. Top Comp sponsored by Wreckers Hotline. I asked Chris Lawrence what it's all about. Well, essentially, Rob, the Wreckers Hotline is a group of 36 independently owned wrecking yards situated around southeast Queensland. Um, if the yard that you call hasn't got the, the part that you require, um, the, the, the Wreckers Hotline is designed to, to try and locate that part for you via a two way radio link and not only locate the part, but get the part delivered to the point closest to you or the Wreckers Hotline member closest to you at no extra charge. So uh, I understand it's just a one phone call deal. Uh, real easy uh, phone number to remember, uh, 13 1984 for Wreckers Hotline. Well, Wreckers Hotline bringing us Top Comp and Drag Racing 98. Now Graham Porter to take on Cam Mumford. Porter's been one of the hot shots in Top Comp. Mumford's got a good leave in the altered. 
Porter's coming back at him. This will be close. Ken Mumford, 751, 281 kilometres an hour. The Northern boys are putting on plenty of pressure for him. Yeah, plenty of pressure as uh, Scott Jansen comes forward now, taking on Steve Swinsco in the Beretta Funny Car. Swinsco leading the Wreckers Hotline Top Comp Series, and there's a nice little pot of gold at the end of it to the guy that uh, wins the overall championship. Jansen, he's, uh, he, well, he's been struggling in qualifying of late, but the car started to step up. I think he is going to be uh, looking pretty good. We are in the second round. He's already got through that first round confrontation. He knows he's up against one of the, uh, the leaders, though, in Steve Swinsco. Jansen down on him. Here comes Swinsco. Yeah, Swinsco's charging. Jansen's going well. The funny car gets there. 792, 276 kilometres an hour. Top Comp Eliminator, of course, on the Group 3 uh, dial-your-own system that I spoke about earlier. Tom Coonan is down there in the CF Performance uh, Ford LTD. He's up against Debbie Reed in the Chev Dragster. So uh, this is a perfect example of what Top Comp's all about. A dragster up against the sedan will be a handicap of flying. If you run quicker than that dial-your-own, uh, that dial-in, you break out. Puts a lot of pressure on the drivers, Paul. Yeah, all the different combinations making an exciting bracket and uh, the LTD's going hard. Debbie Reed's got to pedal it. Debbie Reed with a red light on the start line. So Coonan, an 810-261. He gets a free ride. Debbie left too soon. Coonan's crew are pretty happy about that one. As Pat Selman comes forward, this is an altered with a Chevrolet engine. Small block Chevy for Pat Selman and a big, big Chrysler for Dean McLennan in the Castrol Funny Car. Selman uh, likes the power to weight ratio in the, uh, in the smaller car. McLennan, of course, about 500 cubic inches, over 7 litres of V8 in that one. Yeah, flying the flag for Castrol is uh, Dean McLennan and uh, got a good race on his hands this time round. Officials having a close look at the back of Selman's car there. I can oh. see why. I can see fluid on the uh, on the track. Seriously nailed it. The extra pressure might have been a leaking oil line or something. But, uh, well, Dean McLennan gets to cruise it through. 729, 250 kilometres an hour. Problem on the start line there for Pidey Selman. Big problems there. The car was loose early. Well, somebody's got some problems in the deep end as well. Well, it's been some time since Glenn Micris ran his semi-final round and as you can still see, the boys are thrashing down here in the deep end. They haven't even made it back to the pits. Will they make it in time for their final berth with Graeme Cowan? We'll wait and see. Back to Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98. We're about to move into the semi final of BOC Gas's top alcohol eliminator, Steve Parker, in the funny car to take on Wayne Newby in the drag star. Yeah, Wayne Newby out of New South Wales got a really tough race on his hands this time. Oh, we've been running pretty consistent, it's not running that fast, but we're getting down the track, that's the main thing. Fell asleep in the last run, but a bit faster, that was all. Yeah, we did see a big hole shot from Scotty Ferguson against Wayne Newby in the uh, first round of BOC Gas's top alcohol. But uh, I don't think you'll be going to sleep this time. We will see Harker putting the pressure on with his big funny car. This is the fastest car in the, in the uh, field. Uh, all, it really does run some big speeds, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly. Uh, all day today, it's been running over the 240 mile an hour mark. So the uh, Spectra Thermo King funny car really got the runs on the board. Both cars into pre-stage. You can see the white lights on top of the Christmas tree. Into the start line beam they go. The lights come down. They come out fairly evenly. Newbie's got a march on Harker. Harker's got the speed at the other end. 599, 388 kilometres an hour. A big run. Have a look at this on the Wreckers Hotline replay. You see the dragster hits the front, but it's the speed of the funny car. It'll just carry him right back around the outside. A good win for Harker. Steve, uh, Steve, a 5.99, a berth in the finals, and the first one for you for a while. Unreal, yeah, we're uh, really happy with that. We're just trying to sneak up on it and not get into the tyre shake, but uh, that's great uh, to win two in a row, two rounds in this game. It's, uh, it's great. 
Okay, so uh, who's Steve Harker going to race into the final? Is it going to be the funny car here of Stephen Reed, or will it be in the other lane beside him, Gary Phillips and the dragster? Well, Gary Phillips and the Lucas Oil's dragster also carries Harker transport signage on the side of that one. Well, the guy who's going to be trying to keep him out of the final this weekend is Stephen Reed. Yeah, we're going to see a five from you. Yeah, well, Gary Phillips will definitely run fives in the next round, so we'll be aiming to do that too. Um, We've been creeping up on it for the day. It's still really hot and the conditions aren't great, but uh, we've given it our best shot, that's for sure. Steve Reid in the funny car. As he said, the conditions aren't great. It is still very warm here at Willowbank Raceway. The track temperature got up to 50 degrees this afternoon. And uh, even now, Paul, the actual track surface is still registering well over 40 degrees. It doesn't help these cars, does it? No, far from ideal. Just very difficult to, uh, to read the conditions out here and generate that horsepower. Waiting now, the pre-stage lights are on. Phillips' is stage, waiting now on Stephen Reed to move the funny car in. The lights go to green. This is a good close race. Phillips maybe by a wheel or two, just 606, 370 kilometres an hour. That was a very tight finish. The funny car started to come back at him with some more speed, but it'll be Gary Phillips into the final. Gary, a 606, not your usual five second pass. Uh, we softened it up a little bit like that. We, we didn't want to beat ourselves. Well, I know that you and Steve Harker have been friends for a long, long time. How does it feel having him in the final? Well, it's about time we've been trying to <laughs> we've been working towards this for I don't know how many years. Uh, yeah, it's good. He's not only a friend, he's a sponsor. He's been uh, one of my major sponsors for a, lo uh, for a lot of years. So, uh, yeah, it'll be good. Top comp semi final brought to us by Wreckers Hotline at round two of the Castrol New Year series. Steve Swinstow, the series leader in the funny car to take on Tom Coonan. Coonan didn't have a happy uh, time at round one of the Castrol New Year series. He uh, bent uh, a whole fistful of push rods in the afternoon. Never even got to compete. But now, well, he's in the semi-final, maybe headed for another final. So the Beretta funny car really has had some, uh, some good success here at uh, Willowbank Raceway. It'll be a tough race this time up against Tommy Coonan. Well, Swinsco's had a win, a uh, runner-up at the last meeting. He's trying for a win here, but he red-lighted, so he won't get it. 8.13 for Tommy Coonan. We'll have a look back in the replay. There's a green light for Tom Coonan, a red light for Swinsco. Well, Tommy, after damaging an engine at your last outing here, you're obviously back in fine form. Yeah, we had a few problems first round that didn't allow us to, to run the meeting. We've sorted them out since, and today the car's been immaculate. It's been, uh, nothing's gone wrong, it's just running like a dream. We've got one to go. Ken Mumford now in the bad cut, the altered out of Mackay. And uh, he's looking for a spot in, a, in the final of Wreckers Hotline Top Comp Eliminator at his first try. Dean McLennan in the Castrol Dodge Achiever Funny Car. Yeah, Dean McClellan's been having a really good run in this car uh, since he started. I'm not quite sure, Rob, but uh, within the last 12 months. Uh... Yeah, he, I think he uh, started driving this car um, only late last year. He's been creeping up on it and really is starting to come into his own. Here he is in the semi-final. If he goes through to the final, I tell you what, he is going to take a big march up the points. The... Uh, all of the people in the Castrol suite out here at round two of the Castrol New Year series, I can tell you who they'll be barracking for. Mumford will get the handicap start, then it's up to McLennan to chase him down. Mumford a little out of shape. He is a long way out of the shape, right over near the uh, fence. And I guess Castrol goes into the final. Have a look at this. That car was wild and woolly off the start line. He didn't want to give in either, but once he started to have a good look at the fence, he thought, well, I better get out of this one. Dean, part of the Castrol Racing Team, and this is, I believe, your first final. Yeah, it sure is. Um, I'd just like to thank all my crew today. They worked very hard. We had a few breakages in qualifying. We had to rebuild the engine, and i especially like to thank um, Victor and Marie Bray for giving me the chance to drive the car. Thank you. We're going to pick up the action in Performance Wholesale Super Comp in the semi-finals. But first, let's take a look at how those races made it through to round three. Tony Wedlock overcame electrical problems in qualifying, before defeating Ron Newton C. Alford in round one. In round two, he took the win over John O'Carney in a no handicap battle between the two pro stockers. John Sting's new A dragster continues to impress. Craig Haystead red lighted beside him in the first round, and then Sting ran well under the national index in the second to defeat Colin Lloyd. 
Tim Petterwood came to the event aiming just to test his new Polito engine in the lifestyle Pontiac, but found himself in the semi-finals after easily handling Mark Machetti's similar Pontiac in round one, and then having top qualifier Victor Bray red light by two thousandths of a second against him in the next. Rob Tucker also had opponents going too soon, as first Greg Lay and then Ian Nielsen both left red lights, giving Tucker a free run into the semis in his performance wholesale Oldsmobile. Now let's find out who's going to the final. Performance wholesale Super Comp semi-final, John Sting in this uh, relatively new A Dragster and he's coming up against Tony Wedlock, both guys from the uh, western side of the Great Divide, Wedlock from Toowoomba and of course John Sting from uh, St George. Tony, you're obviously more used to the heads up racing of pro stock but you've slotted in well tonight in Super Comp and you're through to the semi-finals. Obviously here doing some testing? Yeah, we're testing here for next meeting, you know, we're, we're going to run in the heat here at the final round of the New Year's series, so we're, we're here trying to get a tune up for the car. Well, Tony Wedlock, that's what he's chasing. The round three of the Castrol New Year series features uh, a round of the Australian Pro Stock Championship. He's uh, looking to step up into the finals. He can't do it this time. Red light. He's left too soon. So John Sting will have the advantage of being able to back off. Take it easy. He'll get the win. Eight and a half seconds for him. So John Sting into the final against the winner of the next pairing. And uh, Kim Pettiwood there, the Lifestyle Speedflow Products Pontiac. And uh, Kim Pettiwood there uh, at the wheel and uh, watch him do it, starting to burn out, graphically demonstrating there, shifting those uh, gears, warming those tyres, nice and sticky there in the Pontiac. Big burnout from Pettiwood, he really wants to uh, try and maximise traction, he's got a new Joe Polito built engine under the bonnet. He's up against Rob Tucker in the performance wholesale uh, Oldsmobile. I didn't see any burnout from, uh, from Tucker at all, he's gone straight into the stage beams. Pedowood's taking his time, the clock's ticking, but uh, he doesn't seem to be too phased. Have a look at this, lights come down, away goes Pedowood, Tucker going nowhere. I guess he was just hoping for three red lights in a row. That's a bit of a tall ask. Pedowood will get this one. Well, with less than an hour to go to the finals, there's some serious thrashing happening here in the Rapisada racing pits. During the semi-finals, Glenn Micras damaged the clutch, the engine, in fact the whole drivetrain, and the decision has been made to place an entirely new engine into the car. Will they make it to the finals? We'll see. Well, we're into the finals for the support categories and it's performance wholesale junior dragster Clark Andrews to take on Michael Adams. Andrews all the way up from Sydney. And of course this is for the kids, Paul. These, uh, these kids are 8 to 16 year old and they take their racing seriously. Yeah, certainly do. The uh, small Briggs and Stratton motors powering the junior dragsters over the 8th mile. It's half track here at Willowbank Raceway. Good race here between these two. The Oh, look at that. Adams by just a couple of thousandths of a second. 10.28. Still quick for a junior dragster. Superformance Super Street Eliminator now. And uh, George Wagner in the little sprinter up against the Tirana. These guys running on the Group 3 dial your own system. And a red light means that Wagner will get this one handed to him on a silver platter. Yeah, takes the win there uh, pretty easily really over Ben Cox and uh, Ben Cox through there, but uh, Georgie Wagner, 1104, 192. Here we go into Pipe Masters, modified bike eliminator, it's Wendy Parsons to take on Peter Batley. How often have we seen this pair go head to head? They always seem to be in the semis or the finals. Clean greens it is, Batley in front. Wendy Parsons trying to chase him down in Pipe Masters uh, modified bike. And it's the girls' night out, Wendy Parsons, 10.38, 195 kilometres an hour. Next final coming up now, and uh, this is the final of Super Sedan Eliminator, and uh, Juan Kudnig taking on Alan Farrer. Craig R. Performance bringing a Super Sedan Eliminator. It was a very big field of Super Sedans just to make the final as a major achievement. Alan Farrer threw his chance at the big trophy away with a red light. Juan Kudnig has already seen that happen, says... I don't need to try hard, I've got this one in the bag. Yeah, Fitzgerald and the Headsense Drags are now coming into the final of Kenlo Race Cars Modified Eliminator taking on David Mullins. Mullins in a uh, car out of the Kenlo Race Cars shops uh, and Fitzgerald over there for Headsense Cylinder Heads. Uh, and it's uh, Mullins this time that red lights in the Kenlo Race Cars uh, produced car and Fitzgerald gets the easy win. So Morgan and Wacker now bringing us the uh, final of uh, competition bike eliminator, Gavin Eels taking on Gavin Spann. 
The two Gavins going head to head and they are teammates. Both run with assistance from uh, both Weisco Pistons and Parts as well as Circo Engineering. Gavin Eels on the Pro Stock motorcycle. Gavin Span in the far lane on the Suzuki top bike. And a quicker bike, so there will be a handicap apply. Gavin Eels gets out with a red light. I can't believe the number of red lights we've seen in this uh, support category finals. But, well, Gavin Span, he's going to ride it through 7.32. 290 kilometres an hour on two wheels. Stay with us after the break. It's all the big finals. Welcome back to Willowbank Raceways, round two of the Castrol New Year Series. Final of Performance Wholesale Super Comp Eliminator, Kim Pettiwood in the Lifestyle Pontiac to take on John Sting and the Dragster. And Paul, this really should be a crackerjack race. Yeah, certainly is. This Dragster of John Sting's has just run well from the first time off the trailer and uh, taking on the very experienced uh, Kim Pettiwood here. What a final. Well, in these very hot conditions, Pedowit has to be happy with the performance of this new engine. He's out in front with his handicap start. John Sting's got him pretty quickly. I think this is close. Oh, Pedowit by two thousandths of a second. An 8-0-0. Have a look at this for the final on Wreckers Hotline Replay. Well, Kim, there was absolutely nothing in that race. You won by four thousandths of a second. 8-0-0. Man, I knew it was close, let me tell you, because uh, I could see John's wheels coming up and they come up pretty quick and, uh, yeah, so uh, what else can I say? But uh, we couldn't be any happier than what we are. Final of Wreckers Hotline Top Comp Eliminator coming up now. It pits Tom Coonan up against Dean McClendon in the Castrol car. Yeah, the Castrol funny car, Dean McClendon there, but uh, these guys have raced each other uh, many, many times before, so anyone can win this one, uh, Rob. Very hard to pick certainly is the guys have to nominate their own handicap time that dial in we talked about before you run quicker than that you break out so you've got to run as fast as you can without going too fast but it really does level up the competition between the sedans and the funny cars and dragsters Dean McClennan running for Castrol at round two of the Castrol New Year series it's his first final in this car Tom Coonan a seasoned performer and he's got it on a platter Dean McClennan left too soon he's red lighted as well so Tommy Coonan gets the win. Yeah, what uh, a big win there for Tom because uh, that's two Castrol cars here tonight that uh, in fact have gone out via red lights. Well, Tom, that's the only way to win a dial-in race. 8-1-0 on an 8-1-0. Right on, was it? We've been chasing the dial-in a little bit tonight. Um, the humidity has sort of come in and caught us a little bit. And because it's a new engine, we haven't got a baseline to the combination yet. But because we've been able to put a few laps on tonight to see if performance LTD, we've been able to stay ahead of it and it's finally come through. It's been great. It's a tough meeting. Um, I mean, uh, the um, New Year series has always got something special that some of the other meetings don't have. The hype of the top fuel cars, top alcohol cars, and just the people that are around. And it's, it's great to be able to put a good performance together in front of such a great crowd. It's time now to update the Winter Smash Repairs Track Championship scoreboards. In Performance Wholesale Junior Dragster, Mark Adams has hit the front. Super Performance Super Street sees Paul De Blaine holding off Ross Munster. Pipe Master's modified bike is narrowly led by Fabio Crystal from Scott Jurgensen. Craigar Performance Super Sedan sees Juan Kudnick hit the lead from Alan Farrer. Things are tight at the top in Kenlo Racecar's modified eliminator, with Arthur Telford and Ian Nielsen locked together. It doesn't get easier in Morgan and Wacker comp bike as Gavin Spann now joins John Parker at the top. Performance Wholesale Super Comp has four drivers sharing the top of the table. Wreckers Hotline Top Comp breaks the mould with Steve Swinsco enjoying a handy lead from Dean McLennan. Final time now from BOC Gas's top alcohol. Steve Parker and the Harker Transport Spectre Thermo King to take on teammate Gary Phillips in the Lucas Oils Dragster. You know, these guys, uh, Rob, have been mates for a long time and uh, they're really looking forward to racing each other in this final. We've been trying to do this, put this plot into place for a few years now and uh, I guess it's all finally come to uh, fruition, but uh, it certainly hasn't been from lack of trying, I can tell you that. And the Dragster versus the funny car, is it going to be a funny car? Well, we hope so, yeah. You can only uh, try, that's all you can do. But 
Uh, the car's running pretty consistent at the moment, so we're just trying to creep up on it a little and uh, hope, hopefully we'll be there at the end. This is a great matchup. One of the quickest alcohol dragsters in the country for Gary Phillips against the quickest and fastest funny car in the country for Steve Harker. And Harker's red light. There's more cherries here than a fruit shop. Looks like Phillips has got him on the line anyway, a 591. We'll have a look at it on the Wreckers Hotline replay. Yeah, Phillips is driving round him, but Harker had red lighted already. Well, Gary, a 591 and 233, you're really making your mark on this championship series. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, repeat, but it's a little bit early in the season yet. But yeah, we're going to take it as it comes, and we'll be behind the eight ball a little bit before that final run, and he knocked me over with the feather that he red lighted. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. Well, I'm not sure we'll see red lights in uh, the final of Top Fuel. You don't see too many of them in Autobahn Top Fuel Eliminator. Glenn Micris in the Santos Cranes dragster up against Graham Cowan in the uh, Shell Rocket Industries Top Fuel car. And this really has been a fantastic bracket of racing brought to us by Autobahn. Yeah, the weather conditions this afternoon really haven't helped any uh, with the top fuel cars, but uh, the experience really has showed out in the finals. The two most experienced racers in the field, Graham Cowan taking on Glenn Micris. Speaking of that weather, it's still very, very hot here at Willowbank Raceway, even though we're well into the night. Well, it's around, what, uh, 10.40 in the evening at the moment. For that heat, imagine the crew on the Santos Cranes car doing a complete engine transmission uh, clutch change. In that heat, those guys must be out on their feet. Graham Cowan uh, is coming in. He looks strong. The uh, Glenn Micris driven uh, Santo Rapasada owned car. Brand new into the country. First meeting out. These two are the two that will fight out the Australian Championship. Cowan's in front at the moment. Wait and see what happens here. Both the stage, the pro start, and away they go. Graham Cowan on and off the throttle a little bit there, getting traction, goes through for the win, runs a 5-1-2 for 11 kilometres an hour. Yes, it looked right from the start that uh, Cowan left hard, had to backpedal momentarily. You saw the flames go down there. Micras had a problem right from the start line. Eventually a blower belt comes off, but Graham Cowan, another great win. Well, Graham, a big sleep by Glenn on the lights there, which gave you a 5-1-2 win. Is that what it was? That's yeah. it. Yeah, he shook his brains out. And after I had to pedal it, you probably saw that. And just uh, could hang on to it, just all over the place. But uh, wins the win. Good win for the Aussies, and uh, goes to show you we can run with the best of them. Well, congratulations, winner of the Autobahn Top Fuel here, and um, we'll hope to see you in the winner's circle again soon. Yeah, we're we'll looking forward to it. Like I said, when this thing runs, watch it, because it's going to run good. I don't think anyone doubts that. That win gives Graham Cowan a 40-point lead in the Australian Championship. If you want to know anything more about Willowbank Raceway, check out our internet address. It's on the screen now. Make sure you tune in next Sunday afternoon here on 7 and you'll see all of the action of Round 3 of the Castrol New Year Series on Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98.